please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we don't have any adjustments. We are looking for approval of minutes. Monday, April 3rd, 2023, executive session at 4.30 p.m. April 3rd, again, executive session at 5.15. April 3rd, again, budget workshop at 6 p.m. April 3rd, again, regular meeting at 6.30. And Wednesday, April 12th, 2023, executive session, 4.30 p.m. I'm making a recommendation to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Thank you. Seconded. Seconded by <clears throat> Melissa. All in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Public comments. Do we have anybody? Sarah? Nobody and nobody here. Everybody must be home because of the weather. Um, no communications, no committee reports, superintendent report. Sure. Thank you for everyone's patience. We've had a long day. We uh, This afternoon we had a wellness committee meeting followed by uh, two student disciplinary hearings and then another budget workshop for us uh, with that. So I appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, we'll try to move right along with things. Uh, first up is our student representative reports. I'll turn it over to Emma and Aiden to see uh, how things are going and how your school vacation was. Um, my vacation was really good. I had a lot of fun. I went to Florida. But this week, um, there is a ton of sports things that are happening. So tomorrow, there's both a boys and girls game against Gorham um, for tennis, sorry, as well as a baseball game against Scarborough. On Wednesday, there's a track and field meet, which is the first one of the season. It's a home meet. Um, softball game against Marshwood, and then boys lacrosse versus Wyndham. On Thursday, there's a baseball game against Kenny Bunk, um, a girls lacrosse game against Trape, a boys and girls track. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Sorry. <laughs> um, but a girls tennis versus Portland, and then boys tennis versus Portland. And then Friday, a softball game and boys tennis. So yeah, pretty exciting. Let's hope Mother Nature cooperates. Um, so my vacation was good, um, and so first off, there was a signing day hosted by er, for senior Joel Morrison on April 11th, Tuesday, and Joel has committed to play Division One soccer at St. Mary's or Mount St. Mary's in the fall. So he had family members and past coaches come speak about his accomplishments and all of his hard work. And so Morrison is a great role model for all of the future athletes um, that dream and um, that their dreams are possible. And so. Perseverance is an important skill that will help you succeed and reach your goals. So um, he just w talked about that. And then also on April 26th, the Triumph Honor Society is having a coffee house night at 6 p.m. in the high school Agora. So this will be filled with a variety of different things like musical acts or poetry. And tickets will be on sale for $5. And there will also be coffee served at the event. So that's something to look forward to. And then also I just want to touch upon some of the recent student achievement within the athletics. So first senior and three sport athlete Cora Ekman was featured on the News Center Maine and uh, they shared all about the hard work she has put in throughout her high school career as well as um, how she's overcome playing sports during the pandemic. And then also senior John Paul Alexander was recently featured on the Maine News and recognized as athlete of the week for all of his hard work. So a big congratulations to both of these athletes. Yeah, thank you, Emma. I, we were hoping John Paul was here. We could uh, recognize him uh, for that. Uh, that was pretty neat to see that. Um, how was the, uh, both of you, along with John Paul, uh, were involved in the variety show that was happened before the school vacation? How'd that go? I thought that it was a fun night. Um, me and JP were the hosts of it. Um, there was a lot of different acts that came on stage. I thought it was a great time for like just different students to come and show the talents that they had. Yeah, there were a variety of acts. It really was a fun night. Um, the National Honor Society did a lot of the work behind the scenes, but um, it really came together. Yeah. So it was a great event. I really enjoyed it. I know as I got there, Emma, you were taking tickets, welcoming everyone. And Aiden, you were right. You and John Paul were the hosts of the evening. 
And uh, I have to let you know, I was, I was impressed with all of you. That wasn't easy to come in and host. You had to navigate a few technical difficulties, which um, I got to give you and John Paul credit. And also, the jokes that you guys told uh, really resonated with Mr. Nelson. That some people might refer to them as dad jokes, but I got to let you know, you guys were killing it with those. Yeah, they were not that good. We found them on a website, I think, <laughs> called dadjokes.com. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> well said uh, with it. That might be a nice lead-in for us to uh, look at the, this week's uh, spotlight. If uh, Aiden and Emma, you want to continue to just uh, talk about some of the other uh, cool things that are happening throughout the district, that'd be great. So I'll start off. Um, on Friday, March 7th, um, Pratt & Whitney came and visited S SHS and SRTC. Um, they came with a SHS alumni named Ian Kelly, who now works at Pratt & Whitney and spoke to seniors about his process getting started. Um, they offered opportunities for seniors to look into details in the hiring process and the next steps to be involved with Pratt & Whitney, which is awesome, and that's a great opportunity for them. Um, also, at the middle school, science teacher Diana Allen, who has been named a finalist for the 2023 Presidential Awards for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching Program by the Maine Department of Education, Congratulations to her, sorry. Um, up to three state level finalists for each content area are forwarded to a panel of distinguished mathematicians, scientists, and educators at the national level who will assess the applicants before recommending nominees to the White House of Science and Technology Policy. I had her as my seventh grade teacher and she was pretty awesome, so. Um, Chase Frommuller throws out first pitch at Red Sox game. I saw that earlier today and I think that that is pretty awesome for him. Um, he did that Monday, April 17th at Fenway. Um, there is a link to check out news on that first pitch, but again, I just think that that's a pretty awesome opportunity for him. Um, at the Sanford Middle School, um, it, it, it had its JA in a day, um, Economics for Success for 7th graders on Wednesday, April 12th, Junior Achievement is a nonprofit organization that recruits volunteers to teach students about economics and personal finance. At Margaret Chase, Chase Smith, they had their own talent show on Thursday, April 13th. The students' hard work paid off. They were poised and had great performances, and they want to thank you for all the families and friends who were able to come out and support the students. Um, at Pride Elementary, the school counselor's room um, had been very busy with 12 different groups. Some groups are helping to make beautiful two-way and three-way agamograms, um, expressing kindness. The culture in our building is kindness and the students are learning how to show kindness to everyone. Um, at Carl J. Lamb, friends and families of Miss McGuckin's fourth, grade, fourth graders were invited to a triad of performances by the students on Friday, April 14th. The students did an amazing job with their performances. Um, so yeah. Um, so next up is the Sanford Community Adult Education, which they hosted a full house on Tuesday, April 11th. They had classes such as um, math classes, multilingual learner classes, knitting, crocheting, et cetera. And so um, if you want to learn how to sign up for these classes, there's some information below. And then next, moving on to the Spartan Times, the Sanford High School's Key Club, uh, the school's leadership and community service club attended the District Key Club Educational Conference, or DCON, in Springfield, Mass. on March 31st through April 2nd. Um, it was a great experience and learning opportunity for all members of the club, said Mia Kane, key pre club president. So um, if you would like to read more about that event, it's linked below. And moving on to the employee spotlight. This spotlight is recognizing Margaret Chase Smith teacher, Sarah Deschambault. So if you would like to learn more about all the hard work she's doing, um, it talks a little about, about her below. And then um, it was talked about earlier, but Joel Morrison um, signed with Mount St. Mary's, a Division I school on April 11th, and he will also be joining his friend TJ Gurley at Mount St. Mary's in the fall. And so they've talked about going to college together and playing their respective sports since they were younger, and they made it the dream come true. So if you'd like to read more about that, it's also linked below. And then also, Sanford High School athletes were honored at the SMAA banquet. So on Monday, April 10th, Athletic Director Zach Lemon and Principal Matt Peterman attended the Southwestern Maine Activities Association Citizenship Banquet with um, SHS honorees Anna Cote and Tyler LaBeouf and their parents. 
The banquet took place at the Italian Heritage Center in Portland. Every year, the SMAA honors two seniors from each of the 17 members of schools. Sanford High School is honored to have Anna and Tyler represent as the year's citizenship award winners. So congratulations to both of them. And then some announcements. First off, kindergarten registration is now open for the 2023-2024 school year, so um, click the link below for some more information. And then also the sports season is just starting to kick off for high school and middle school. So there's a link below for um, the game and practice schedules for high school sports. And there's also a link for more information about the middle school sports schedule. And last, as always, there's some additional links to help stay up to date with the Sanford community. So there's the City of Sanford, WSSR TV, Sanford Athletics Instagram, and also Spartan Times online newspaper. Emma and Aiden, thank you, well done, nice job, great to see, and congratulations to all of our students uh, and staff who were honored and featured in uh, the latest edition of the Sanford Spotlight. Um, I, I was able to see the JA in a day, the junior uh, achievement that was uh, recognized for the middle school, uh, at Sanford Middle School, back before the April vacation. Uh, that's the uh, program that they did, uh, it's really, uh, a, it facilitates the partnership between business and school, and so they have business volunteers involved in the program that help come in and work with our students to educate them about uh, this focused, uh, this one focused on financial literacy, economics for success. So we had people from Stone Coast, Stone Coast Fund Services, Heatable, uh, Moody's Collision, uh, being able to come and help with that. So a big thank you to them and their volunteers to be able to come back and help our students. I was able to move along with that to be able to see uh, how our students were engaged and looking like it was uh, information that was um, uh, well received as they're starting to look at um, economics and financial literacy that way. Big thank you to Aaron Berry who also um, helped coordinate that on the school end. Couple field trips to announce. Um, our JMG program at uh, Sanford Middle School uh, will be going up to the Challenger Experience up in Bangor. That's an overnight. They've done that in the past. So that'll be May later the, um, in May, May 18th and May 19th. And then our um, fire science program at SRTC, they'll be heading up to Farmington on May 23rd. And that's their state practical end test that they'll be, they'll be doing for firefighting. So uh, we wish all of our students participating in that good luck. Uh, also, um, just wanted to up people, uh, update people on the school nutrition director a search update. As you know, longtime school nutrition director Holly Hartley is retiring at the end of this school year in June. So um, we have advertised for her position. We had seven people apply and interviews are scheduled uh, for tomorrow with four of the candidates. Uh, Cheryl Fournier uh, will be um, coordinating that with other representatives and other administrators and other food service people, a variety of uh, interview committee there for those four candidates and with the uh, plan to recommend um, final list or a finalist on to be able to meet with me. Um, so our hope is that we will be able to um, be bringing someone forward at our uh, next meeting. Um, I don't think we'll be able to do it in our next meeting, but our second meeting in May to bring somebody up um, for you for nomination to be able to have that position that would start July 1st and maybe also do it in such a way that they might also have some time to connect with Holly while she's still here to be able to help with that transition. So just an update there. And that's the superintendent's report. Okay, thank you. Director's report, Stacy Bissell. Unless you don't want to go first. Do you want to go first, Steve? Or <laughs> I'm not <talking about. laughs> uh, two things to update on. The first is on April 1st of every year, we have a child count that's required for the Department of Ed. And so as of today, our number is 705 special ed students, and that lines up with the main state reporting field. Between now and April 30th, my guess is, is that there'll be other students that will add to that count, which is typically what happens. 
we do all the enrollments on April 1st, and then there's a bunch of certifications that we have to do. But as of today, which is um, five students more than we had October 1st, I think the other piece of important information is that we currently have 28 initial referrals to special ed between grades five and 12, which is one of the changes we've seen since the pandemic that are in the process of being completed. So while those won't be in our April 1st count, they will likely, some of them, be in our October 1st count for next year. I don't know if anybody has any questions about that. The next thing to update is we had our first um, special ed advisory committee meeting on uh, April 12th. And we have our next one on February, no, April 12th. I was going back to February. <laughs> I guess I haven't had enough of this year yet. Um, April 12th and May 10th. And so the first meeting on April 12th was simply an organizational meeting. Talked about the norms, the rules, generated a bunch of topics. And what we realized quickly is we could have enough topics to meet for 10 years. So we picked two topics for our next two meetings. On the 10th, our topic will be how can we collaboratively creatively retain and attract special ed teachers, special ed ed techs, and related service providers. And on the 24th is really an overview of the process of special education. And that's all I have, unless people have questions. Thank you. I just want to say that we were at the meeting, right? And it was awesome. Thank you. Drum roll for Steve. Good evening. Um, I have an update this evening on our summer, summer facility use planning. Prior to school vacation, I met with the facilities director, Jason Dudley, athletics director, Zach Lemon, food service director, Holly Hartley, um, Lori Hegarty from the Sanford Recreation Department, and other school staff that are involved in summer programming to discuss the use of our facilities over the summer. As we look at the use of our facilities in the summer, we try to balance the needs of our summer programs with the need to clean our buildings for the upcoming school year and complete the necessary maintenance projects. Um, this summer, we worked um, to avoid using Carl Lamb School, uh, there, as there are several projects that are scheduled to occur there, including interior painting, new door locks, um, refinishing of the gym floor. In addition, there may be some other potential additional work done, um, which may include the playground. Um, so we will not be using Carl J. Lamb School um, this coming summer. All of our other buildings will be used um, for summer programming. Special Education Summer School will be held at MCS July 10th through August 3rd. Title I Summer School will be held at SPE once again July 10th through August 3rd. And the Recreation Department will be using Sanford Middle School, Sanford Pride, and MCS starting June 19th all the way through August 4th. And the extended camp at this time is scheduled to be at Memorial Gym from 8-7 through August 18th. Um, athletics, at this time, all the athletic activities that are being scheduled are being scheduled for the high school. Um, as well as if band camp is done, drama camp, um, those will all be done at the high school. So we continue our work with summer um, building use, but that's where we're at at this time. Now, summer food service, um, MCS, because of the work that we are doing at CGL over the summer, um, Holly has applied for a waiver to allow us to serve meals at MCS as a replacement. So that is good news. Um, and that is what is allowing us to have summer programming at MCS um, and um, the rec programming there as well. We will also be doing summer food service at the high school, Sanford Pride, Carpentier Park, Curtis Lake Church, Springvale Playground, and the YMCA. So a lot of the legwork, the groundwork is being done for summer and um, we're moving forward. Any questions on summer? Pre-K update. Um, over vacation, we finalized the um, pre-K lottery selection. Um, we were able to fill all the slots that we had available. We do have 19 uh, students that were 
on, uh, currently on the wait list. Um, this week, we will be sending registration packets out to families with the expectation that they will be back on May 12th. What we learned when we sent these out last year is that after that initial date, um, some folks that originally had signed up, they withdrew for a variety of reasons. So we do expect that some of those 19 folks on the wait list will get in, um, but we just have to wait to see what slots become available. Um, in addition to that, just an FYI for you folks, the, this year we are adding an informational night for incoming pre-K students um, that will be held at May, in May. Um, and those are going to be held at the individual schools. Um, just to welcome pre-K parents into the school system, just to answer any questions they may have, um, meet and greet, and we hope that this will help with um, the transition process for our incoming kiddos. Um, our pre-K classrooms will be observed once again this week that are part of the grant um, from our DOE consultant, um, and they're excited to share the progress that the students have made, and um, so we welcome Sue back to our classrooms this week. In terms of the extended grant application, um, that application is due this Friday, and the amount in that grant that we are requesting is $99,000. Um, and there are basically five things that we're gonna be asking for in the grant for funding for. That is the EdTech salaries through December, um, additional supplies, some furniture, um, minor furniture, additional chairs, a couple of tables, um, books um, for their classroom libraries, and some playground updates. Um, sandboxes we need to add a sandbox in a couple of locations and then shade covering um, is a big expense that we do not have on all of our playgrounds why do we need shade covering because pre-k kids spend a lot of time outside um, and that is something we need to look at so we're going to look at what's the most cost effective way um, that will get the job done but also have some sustainability for us um, in terms of future costs down the road and that's all I have for your updates tonight, being on this vacation last week. So, any questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, new business. Mr. Nelson, budget changes. Sure. So, um, last couple months have been really um, consumed with our budget. And so I wanted to, uh, that's going to be an action item for the school committee to take uh, this evening. Um, we just went to, um, I want to review our budget process. If people have been following along, uh, we start uh, as administrators uh, preparing our budgets in the fall. And then uh, that is at our level. And when I say our level, that would be the central office level. Uh, with the uh, su superintendent, assistant superintendent, and the business administrator. Uh, we work on and then bring a first budget, initial budget, to the school committee. This year we brought that on January 21st with an executive summary. And then we had a number of workshops and meetings that evening with um, on different topics, adult education, uh, SRTC, uh, we also uh, went over the state subsidy that we received with the EPS formula. We had a special education. We uh, also spent time focused on the ESSER budget. And that led to our last budget workshop and ultimately approval of the budget on February 27th. That budget that we approved, uh, we started on January 21st with a budget that had an increase in expense at 6.1%. And... Um, taxation got up as high as 25.6%. But when we got our work done at the school committee level, we had the expense budget down to 4% and the taxation down to 11%. We then uh, presented that to the city council at the beginning of March. We gave a detailed presentation on March 14th, and then also on March 21st, we also brought in some different, um, meeting the recommendations that the uh, city council gave us. And so the city council did have their last budget workshop and their vote to approve the school budget bottom line on April 4th, 2023. And so here's kind of telling that story from January 21st. You'll notice that when we ended after that work with the city council, the expense budget was re reduced further down to 3.8% and taxation was also reduced um, to keep at 6% for the schools. Just to kind of bring that down, we did make some amendments that totaled $537,000.
We did eliminate a third SRO position. We were able to make an adjustment to our health insurance uh, that saved just under 275,000. We did a miscellaneous cuts of just under 45,000. We did have um, eliminated the high school swim program. Uh, and we also did some uh, changing to our uh, library staffing, uh, specifically and primarily at the elementary level for a savings of $35,143. And then as um, Steve Boussier mentioned earlier in his report, the pre-K grant that we're eligible for also provided us a savings as well of $46,386. Those $45,000, just under $45,000 of miscellaneous cuts, there's the list that you can see there. Uh, that's everything that hit a uh, variety throughout the district from our maintenance through MCS down to athletics uh, and throughout being able to total uh, $44,688. The lion's share of that was coming from uh, some radon testing that uh, we have to uh, complete by 2025. We've pushed that off with some savings in hopes that we're going to be able to secure a grant for that. Uh, we did, late in the process, as we're meeting with the school committee, did find that there was additional subsidy that we did receive. There was an error. The Maine Department of Education made an error in their EPS 279 reports. And so that was a change in the mill rate of going from 7.29 to 6.97 on those 279s. And that was a savings of just uh, additional subsidy, rather, of just under 550000 so with that, we were able to then move three positions that had started out in our local budget, but we had um, moved to be covered by federal ESSER funds for the coming year. That would be a, an additional ESOL teacher and also a special education teacher, Carl J. Lamb, a teacher and a Sanford Middle School teacher, at special, uh, special ed teacher at the middle school. And those total just over 300,000. That allowed us to then, as we move those from ESSER, to also move some other positions back that we were eliminating. Uh, middle school uh, administrative assistant, two teachers at the middle school. And we also have a little um, to play with right there, additional that we're monitoring right now to see where those best funds will be utilized uh, as we continue to monitor the uh, population increase for our uh, ESOL students. Uh, among some other options. So there's, uh, by having that uh, money and what we're able to do there, that shows the net reduction in taxation that we were able to come back with that additional subsidy. And then you saw the net change. And then we bo boiled that right down when you can see what had happened right from when we had originally presented to the school committee, uh, to the city council rather, uh, at the beginning of March. In essence, uh, through the city council's work, we were able to reduce the budget by $776,853. And so what we're going to ask this evening is that the school committee also take action. The city council, what they approved was a uh, school budget uh, for 2023-2024 that includes adult education, and that total is $61,487,061. That's an increase of just over uh, $2.2 million, or as I mentioned, 3.8%. And I show there that there's the budget by article. Uh, we put that up there because uh, the now, uh, after the action that the school committee takes tonight, that budget is going to uh, vote a referendum, and that will be on Tuesday, June 13th. And, we, and when people do uh, vote uh, on the budget, it is done by article. And so that's how it all uh, shakes out so that you can see uh, what we were looking at for what we originally proposed from the school committee back at the end of February to what the city council ultimately approved. And so there it is. Uh, the city council, is in, in, as part of taxation, approved it on the school side of 16410427000 which is then an increase of uh, just over 930000 or 6%. So we're going to take action tonight. Cheryl, I want to make sure I get this right. Are we, is this the number that we're approving here? 
61 million. So what I would like to entertain is a recommendation to accept the 2023-2024 school budget changes as presented with a total of $61,487,061. Kelly? I'll make that motion. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody second the motion? I'll second. Second, thank you very much. Um, sorry, I got a sneeze. Um, any discussion? <laughs> Jen? I just wanted to take a minute to thank um, everybody who was involved in the process, uh, both those who worked um, on the city council side as well as the school side, as well as those who made any kind of contact with uh, Mr. Nelson or the school committee. You know, it's also an open invitation for people to send their feedback on ideas, on um, you know, how we can present a responsible budget, both fiscally, but also ideas on, you know, the process of our budget. Um, it's a daunting process, and I know that folks can sometimes feel like they're coming in in the 11th and a half hour. And so just kind of sending your feedback so that we can know how we can better include you in discussions so that we feel like we're a part of a team. Um, you know, you can always reach all of us at, um, school committee at Sanford.org. Um, also just touching upon the responsibility of meeting the needs of our students, but being, um, you know, responsible to our taxpayers is a very daunting challenge. Um, and it's nothing that anybody takes lightly. And I would encourage people to continue to learn about how schools are funded because they're not just funded locally. They're also funded um, at the state level. And so understanding funding formulas so that together as a community, we can advocate for what's the best needs for our community is important. Getting to know our state representatives and having them do that work for us in Augusta is really going to make a bigger impact moving forward um, because the schools don't generate income. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand that piece. We don't generate income, but just like our household budgets, you know, even just the cost of electricity, oil, et cetera, every aspect of what it takes to run a school is increasing in this economy. So, so I'm grateful for this budget cycle and what we were able to do, um, but it is a cautionary tale of what's to come. Budget cycles are gonna continue to be more challenging. Um, and I think working as a committee, as a city council, but more importantly, as an entire community and understanding that we're on the same page and that we want the same things, even when difficult decisions have to be made, um, you know, is a challenge, but I, it's something that I'm hopeful for because I think that we are stronger together. And lastly, um, I just wanna speak to those who in difficult budget cycles won't be with us in the future. People matter. Um, and I know every single one of us take that to heart when somebody isn't able to be included in a budget. I don't ever want them to feel dismissed because people do matter and we're charged with making those difficult decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, appreciate that, Jen. All in favor? And just uh, to add to that, um, uh, well said, Jen. We do have next week, prior to our school committee meeting, we are going to have another school committee budget workshop where we can really look at our budget development process so that we, as Jen mentions, if there's things that we can be able to do to help along with that and help that be more inclusive, uh, that's, uh, that's information that we'd like to receive or feedback we'd like to receive. You can find a lot of our information, including the PowerPoints, including the videos of that, that will be on our website to help you be able to bring, uh, break that information down. It's a budget which is challenging because uh, Jen did a nice job of outlining, uh, outlining those challenges, but I also know that all, diff all budgets are difficult, especially those that are gonna be in the impact of loss of, of positions to be able to do that. None of that is done uh, with anyone um, being happy in these types of situations. Uh, I also know that um, I am proud of the budget as we look at it, especially when you can look at it in terms of uh, what we're providing here in Sanford. Uh, in comparison to what other area schools and communities are also seeing that this was something that was done collaboratively for us 
I also know it's only going to get more challenging in terms of what we look for. Our valuation is going to continue to grow, uh, go up, and when that does, that's going to impact the state subsidy and the formulas that we receive, uh, the funds that we receive on that. So, um, but yeah, if there's some feedback that people have, please give that to us. That can help us continue to refine that process going forward. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, moving forward, no old business. We're moving on to staff items, resignations, retirements, staff appointments, staff transfers, nominations. Sure. So a couple uh, retirements. Bonnie Carmen, pre-K teacher, and Eileen Glode, resource room teacher, uh, both at Sanford Pride Elementary. want to thank them for all of their uh, efforts and wish them the best of luck in retirement. A couple other, uh, some other resignations, Samantha Durant, uh, Sanford Pride, uh, The Kitchen, Nate Mann, JV Boys Soccer Coach, Kendra O'Connell is our varsity cheer coach, Jen Cody, Special Education Ed Tech at Sanford High School, Kathleen Guptill, Bridge Teacher, uh, Mark Silver, Science Teacher, grade at the Sanford High School, and Heather Weaver, also um, English Teacher at Sanford High School. I want to thank all of them for all of their efforts and wish them best of luck. In the future, a couple other staff appointments. Uh, Austin Swinnon is a second shift custodian at the middle school. Anne Marie Libby is a second shift custodian at the middle school. May Witt, kitchen personnel at MCS. Ruby Lachance, middle school softball coach. Taylor Below, uh, Bullier, special education ed tech two at Carl J. Lamb. And uh, Eric Ames is the part time second shift custodian at Sanford Middle School. A couple other stipend appointments are uh, getting caught up for uh, Brent Coleman as a mentor stipend, Amy Turgeon as a co-advisor for the Skills USA at uh, SRTC, Marie, and then a couple as um, uh, Steve uh, Boussier mentioned, summer programming. Uh, we've got a couple people in leadership positions there, Title I Summer School Director uh, Maria Scofani, and then the Extended School Year Director Jed Russell. And then a couple transfers to announce. Uh, Steve Brown from the head custodian at Margaret Chase Smith School to the assistant director uh, of facilities and maintenance. That's a, to be determined because we're in the process of filling his head custodian position at MCS and we hope to be doing that in the next week or two. Uh, a couple coaching changes, uh, transfers. Vicki Thomas moving from eighth grade boys soccer to seventh grade girls soccer. Keith Gendron moving uh, from the seventh grade boys soccer to eighth grade boys soccer. And Nate Mann moving from the JV boys soccer down to the seventh grade boys soccer um, for that. And then there is one nomination. Uh, we are getting a um, head start on the hiring for 2023-2024. Uh, looking for a social work, uh, special education social worker position at Carl J. Lamb. And we were able to uh, meet with Sydney Wolf, really impressed with Sydney. We wanted to lock her up uh, as soon as we can so we don't lose her to uh, someone else. So I present to you uh, to accept Sydney Wolf's nomination um, with a one year probationary contract for 2023 2024. Okay, and Kelly? I will make that motion. Thank you very much. I'm looking for a second motion. Second. Thank you, Melissa. All in favor? All in favor. Okay, policies and procedures. Good evening. I have one policy this evening for a second read. That is policy GBB, staff involvement and decision making. And if you remember, this policy replaced ABB in our policy manual. The revised policy more clearly defines the role of the school committee superintendent and staff in the decision-making process involving curriculum instruction in the overall school program. Um, and I recommend to accept this policy, policy for a second reading. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Seconded by Jen. I'll second that. Thank you very much. All in favor? All in favor. Thank you, Steve. There are no items for future agenda. Calendar announcements, Mr. Nelson? Sure, so uh, we'll be right back at here next week for our first regular school committee meeting in May. That's scheduled for next Monday, May 1st at 6.30. Prior to that, we're gonna have an executive st session for a student disciplinary hearing uh, at uh, 4.30. And then we're also gonna have a school, as I mentioned earlier, a school committee workshop uh, to review our budget development 
development process, uh, why it is still fresh in our minds, and so that'll be next Monday at 5.30. Uh, there'll also be a, a, the May monthly uh, safety committee meeting will take place next Monday as well at 3.30. Uh, school Lunch Hero Day is Friday, May 5th, uh, coming up so that we can honor our school food service staff across the district. The next Dropout Prevention Committee meeting is scheduled for this Thursday at 2.30 at Central Office. Uh, we also, on May 2nd, are going to have a uh, meeting um, to review our current strategies to address vaping tobacco use by students. That'll be this Tuesday, May 2nd at 2.30. Uh, tomorrow we have a Sanford Performing Arts Center Advisory Committee meeting. That's gonna take place at 3.30 tomorrow. That was um, rescheduled from prior to uh, the school vacation. Also the next SRTC Advisory Committee meeting is scheduled for next Wednesday, May 3rd. That'll take place at 11.30. And that's a good one you don't wanna miss because you get to hear our, from our students and get to hear about their experiences and they also serve you an outstanding, phenomenal lunch. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And as Stacy mentioned, as part of the special ed, the next special education advisory committee meeting will be on May 10th um, for that. And then our second school committee meeting in um, May is on Monday, May 15th. And those are the upcoming dates. That's it. It's <laughs> not a lot. Okay, I'm making a recommendation to adjourn this meeting at 7.50. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jen. I'll second. Seconded by Kelly. All in favor? All in favor. Much appreciated, everybody. Thank you for your time. Have a good night.